some of these suggestions that might may help to ease your pain and have you begin to feel as if you're moving through your grief rather than avoiding it. Um, bringing meaning into the holidays while remembering your loved one is worth pondering. And I think that's the key. How do I honor that person? Um, how do we get through these difficult times without forgetting that person? Um, coming up with a plan and a special way of including them in the holidays. Um, those are all really important, I think, um, so that you feel that you still have a part of that person with you during those special times. Because of all the memories you've had and the love you have for, for that person or those persons. Um, so there are 64 tips that we found for coping with grief at the holidays. And some of these may work for you and some of them may not. So just kind of take these with a grain of salt. Did, did you want to start, Wendy, with the first 32 of them? Yep, absolutely. So um, acknowledge that the holidays will be different and they will be tough. Decide which traditions you want to keep, right? And then also decide which traditions you want to change. Create a new tradition in memory of your loved one and decide where you want to spend the holidays. Really important. A lot of people can choose different places to spend on the holidays. Sometimes they don't want to be in the same places, so they choose to travel or do something different. <clears throat> Plan ahead and communicate with the people you will spend the holiday with in advance. This is really important in grief in general, is that we need to communicate with the people that are still in our lives. And um, usually when there's most frustration and feeling like you're not um, hearing one another, it's because you don't, you know, you're not communicating effectively. So that's something we really discuss a lot in our grief groups. Of, you know, how can you communicate what your needs are and then also that they can communicate their needs, right? Remember that not everyone will be grieving the same way you are grieving. So when you communicate how you're grieving and allow them to talk about how they're grieving, then um, everybody can be you know, respectful of one another. Remember that the way others will want you to spend the holiday may not match how you want to spend the holiday. And there should be no obligations to spend the holiday the way somebody else wants you to. You know, This is your own grief path. Put out a memory stocking or a memory box or another special place where you and others can write down memories you treasure and read them together. I love this. I thought this was such a great thing. Mm -hmm. to, um, really talk about the memories that um, are good memories of holidays together. And then you can share them together. I think that's a, um, for families that have a hard time starting conversations um, or, you know, um, sharing things. This is a, a really good um, exercise that might help you to be able to start that conversation. Um, light a candle in your home, a memory of the person that you're lost. And we're going to talk about a little bit more how to do that um, in later slides. Include one of your loved one's favorite dishes in your holiday meal. I don't know about you all, but um, I'm still making, you know, my mother-in-law's passed away 20 years and we still do something for a holiday, um, you know, whether it's a cookie she baked or a side dish she made, there's some, um, or, or dishes that she gave me, something incorporated into that holiday meal um, somehow brings us all comfort, right? Be mm -hmm. honest, tell people what you do want to do for the holidays and what you don't want to do. Uh, make a donation to a charity that was important to your loved one in their name. And there are a lot of charities that are out there, you know, including our Cancer Caring Center. It's really struggling right now. And, and so sometimes I think it's nice to do that. You know, maybe there is a certain cause or something that you're, I know my father loved working with special needs kids. So, you know, we all usually make a donation in his name um, at the holidays, you know, um, with to the, um, um, Oh my goodness, I'm blanking, but to an agency that actually helps with special needs kids, a special Olympics, there it is. Um, and um, that, you know, I would think my dad would be happy that we're, do we're doing that, you know. Um, buy a gift you would have given to your loved one and donate it to a local charity. Once again, um, sometimes just donating gifts. There are a lot of um, charities that are out there looking for gifts for children and, um, you know, others that are in need. If you're feeling really ambitious, you can even adopt a family in memory of your loved one. Um, sometimes that's helpful. 
see a counselor. So now is a good time to talk to somebody. Um, for those of you that haven't done that yet, um, now may be a hard, extra hard time. So this is sometimes a catalyst to kind of get you to talk to others. Pick a few special items that belong to your loved one and gift them to friends or families who will appreciate them. I remember when my parents had passed away, um, um, my, my sister actually had, my parents had these really old, beautiful ornaments from their tree and um, she wrapped them all up for us and handed them out to our, you know, the grandkids and great grandkids and these lovely little boxes. And so they can each treasure them on their tree and kind of pass family tradition down to them. It was a nice, lovely gift. Um, make a memorial ornament, wreath or decoration in honor of your loved one. Um, if you have been having a hard time parting with your loved one's clothing, use the holiday as an opportunity to, do, to donate these items to a homeless shelter. Um, send a holiday card to your friends of your loved one who you may regret having lost. So that's also kind of a nice thing, sending a holiday card to those, um, you know, you, you might have lost touch with, and that happens. So... Um, visit your loved one's grave site and leave a grave basket uh, or grave blanket rather, wreath, poinsettia or other meaningful holiday item and um, play your loved one's favorite holiday music. If your loved one hated holiday music, that's okay. okay. Play whatever music they loved. Music has a, um, a big attachment to our feelings and for some people it's comforting. Sometimes it's also um, hard to listen to holiday music, any mm -hmm. type of music. So you have to kind of use your own guidance. Is that going to be comforting to you or is it going to be harder for you? Journal when you're having an especially bad day. Um, you know, um, writing out your feelings is kind of what journaling is. So when you're having a bad day before you climb into bed at night, just kind of writing things down on a piece of paper that you can, you know, tuck away and say, okay, all those feelings are out of my, you know, my mind now. Skip holiday events if you are on holiday overload, right? And, um, you know, sometimes it's just too much. And, um, it, and the next one kind of coincides with that. Don't feel guilty about skipping events if you're experiencing holiday overload. You know, let your guilt go. You know, um, this is a good time that you're able to do that. Don't get trapped. I really like this one a lot. And this comes in play for a lot of us. When you go to holiday events, drive yourself so you can leave when you want to. Some mm. We agree to go with other um, people, um, you know, or, you know, if we have children or siblings or friends, um, you know, it's okay to drive yourself. It, it's worth that extra parking fee or, you know, gas in your car mm -hmm. to do that, right? Pull out old photo albums and spend time on the holiday looking at the photos. Once again, sometimes people look at photos and are comforted. Sometimes they're, you know, they're not. Uh, talk to kids about the holidays. It can be confusing for kids that the holidays can be both happy and sad after death. Let them know it is okay to enjoy the holiday and it is okay to be sad. I think adults need to think about this as well as the kids. Um, sometimes we think that we should not be happy and that we should just be sad, but there are moments when you can find some joy. Moments. And that's okay. It's not disrespectful to your involvement. Um, make a dish that your loved one used to make, you know, and don't get discouraged if it is not quite like what your loved one made. The funny thing in our family is my mother-in-law made this stuffing and my mother-in-law was a wonderful cook, but the one thing she made that I didn't like was her stuffing and my husband, brother-in-law loved it. But unfortunately, I have the recipe, but it just never turned out exactly the way um, it was for that she made it. So I was okay with that, but my husband, he misses that. So that is hard. All right, Trish, I'm gonna let you take over for the next couple slides for these. Okay. All right. Um, You're on leave an empty seat. What was the last one you were on? Oh. You're on leave an empty seat at the holiday table. Oh, okay. I, okay. Um, if, if leaving an empty seat is too depressing, then you can invite someone who doesn't have any family to spend the holiday with you. Um, leaving an empty seat might be something helpful to you to honor your loved one. And again, it may not be something you want to choose to do. It may not be helpful. Um, you can choose not to send any holiday cards this year. There's nothing wrong with that. I've known people who have said they've skipped it, especially the first year. 
um, after the loss of their loved one, um, when the major holidays come about. Um, and don't feel guilty about not sending cards. It, it takes a lot of energy. I know myself, I'm not grieving this holiday season um, significantly. I, might, I am to some extent because my brother's gone. He would have been 70 years old yesterday. But um, you don't have to feel guilty about not sending cards. Um, it's, it takes a lot of time. Um, to write something in them. You don't know what to write. You don't feel like writing something. You're not in a festive, joyous mood, of course. So you just don't do it. Um, that's okay. Um, you can create a deer photograph, D-E-A-R, with the photos of uh, holidays past. You can skip exchanging gifts or minimize gifts. Um, material things might be more stressful because um, that represents joy and fun and all that sort of thing. Um, opening up a gift and feeling special. And when your loved one's not there, of course, you can't, can't do that with them. So you might want to just do something that's more simple, um, that has more meaning. Um, it might be giving um, your favorite pictures of your loved one to each family member and in a frame um, with them in it or with the family or something like that might be more helpful to you. Um, you can put out a photo table during the holidays and then have photos of your loved one with holiday celebrations in the past in the photos. Go into a grief support group because you're sharing with other people who are in your shoes and who are struggling as well. Um, decorations are important to a lot of people, lights, glitter, all that sort of thing. You can skip that or you can minimize that. Um, you can just do candles or simple lighting or, or not do any of that. And again, don't feel guilty um, if you skip it or if you minimize it. Next slide. And remember that crying is okay. Um, the holidays are going to be a trigger for a lot of emotions. So allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel. Um, don't make excuses for why you're crying. You're, you're not obligated. You don't owe anyone an explanation. Um, you can volunteer somewhere in your loved one's memory. Um, that may be with a needy cause or a needy person. Sometimes it's just the neighbor next door or someone in your neighborhood who maybe is elderly or lonely. Um, if you have the energy and that's something you think might help, you can bake them a small bread and take it over and just sit, sit and talk with them a little bit. Um, and sometimes when you do that sort of thing, you'll learn something about that person's loss and maybe what helped him or her get through that difficult time. Um, do away with perfectionism. Often the holidays are about getting it all right, getting the perfect gifts, the perfect tree, setting the table in a perfect way, perfect gifts. Try to not focus in that regard because again, that takes a lot of energy as well. And it doesn't have that meaning for you, particularly this year. And then just ignore people who want to tell you what you should do. Just if you can, let it go in one ear and out the other. If they're persistent, then you might just have to um, be assertive and confront them and just say, you know, I appreciate your concern and your suggestions, but I really need to do things this way or I, I want to make my own decisions. Um, and be pretty firm about that. Um, Again, you're not obligated to explain yourself, but just make it brief and to the point. I'm going to do this myself. I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you very much. Um, so listen to yourself and trust yourself. Talk with your family. And uh, that's part of the um, plan that we talked about the last time and something that you're all working on and are going to share with us later. Um, so you want to seek gratitude. Um, 
write down something you're grateful for. Um, you can share it on social media. Um, look for the little things in life during the holiday season. You know, maybe it's going out and licking snowflakes that fall from the sky or taking a walk in the snow and um, anything like that, uh, particularly in nature, can give a lot of solace to people. Um, and it's quiet. So you can be alone with your thoughts or be with someone you love who shares your grief. Um, slow down is, is important and try not to be around all that hustle bustle noise that just kind of agitates, I think, grief sometimes. Uh, be careful about food. Um, this is something for all of us, but particularly if you're grieving, you're exhausted, your emotions are all over the place, um, you're not sleeping well. Um, so try not to eat things like a dozen cookies and that, that kind of thing that a lot of us do um, because you'll feel worse, certainly. And be, be careful as well about alcohol because it is a depressant and it can make you feel relaxed initially. But those of you that have indulged in the past, you know that your true feelings will come out and you'll, you'll feel pretty bad and pretty depressed. So if you're stressed about the crowds at a mall or any shopping area, um, do online shopping if you're going to do any shopping. I mean, going to the mall is very difficult for people. I've heard that certainly, because um, you, you're, you're right in the midst of all that hustle bustle and noise. Maybe you wanna buy a gift for yourself, maybe a massage, maybe a scarf, maybe a book, uh, inspirational book might be something. Next slide. Next slide, Wendy. I, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. That's okay. Sorry, I didn't see. Okay. <laughs> so be open to help. There are people who want to help and offer their support in small ways or big ways. So don't be reluctant to accept some help from people. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Um, if somebody wants to bring you food or um, if you want to put up a few lights, something like that outdoors and somebody wants to help you, um, allow them to do that. If you do want a tree, some people appreciate having a tree. Um, others do not want a tree um, with ornaments and all that sort of thing on it. It's wh whatever. Whatever you think is going to work for you. Um, so whenever you have a holiday prayer, a toast, or however you start off your holiday evenings, you can have a moment of silence um, in honor of your loved one. Um, you can donate a holiday meal to a family in need through local church or charity. Uh, there's lots of opportunities. Lots of things come through the mail, like through Light of Life Mission, there are other um, organizations that are really in need of support for people who won't have holiday food. Um, be clear about the people you want to surround yourself with during the holidays, and that's probably going to be a few people rather than more people. And carefully identify who's going to cause you more stress. And those are the people who or insistent about telling you what to do or say inappropriate things or don't have respect or sensitivity for your grief. Um, so you're better off just avoiding them and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, staying away from them. Um, make some quiet time for yourself you can journal, meditate, pray, listen to music, watch TV, movies, paint, um, whatever that might be. And again, I know people who have talked about those walks in the snow. Um, there's just something about the snow falling and being out in nature and watching the snow and the quietness of, of it and the beauty of it. Um, 
practice self-care, take care of yourself to recharge, whether that's a massage or getting enough rest, um, exercising, if that helps you, whatever that might be. Um, uh, you can do a memorial grief activity together. Um, this is where memory boxes are important. They do memory boxes at the caring place and uh, for children that had a loss, but they're really useful for adults as well. If you decorate a pretty box, you can invite your nieces or nephews or grandchildren to participate or your children and put anything special about that loved one in the box and keep it in a special place where you can pull it out and look at it and remember that person that you love. Um, you can donate altar flowers or other decorations at your place of worship. Um, some people light a vigil light. I know in Catholic churches, probably other churches as well, they do that in memory of their loved one. And then last but not least is to prioritize and don't overcommit. Um, you can say no. You might be invited to do 10 things and you want to do two things. That's okay. So you want to save your energy for, for those gatherings or activities that are most important to you. Okay. Do you want to go on with the next um, page, Wendy? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, the next one is make a list and check it twice. Um, grief makes it harder for us to concentrate and remember things. Make a list and write things on the calendar. Um, I think this is really helpful. It makes you feel like you have some structure and you have some, you have some control over some things by at least seeing it there. And it, and it, it helps you when your mind is, um, you know, so overwhelmed with everything. So making a list is really helpful. Um, skip it really if you just can't face the holiday it is okay to take a break this year before you get to this extreme though consider if you could just simplify your holiday if you do skip it still make a plan decide if you will still see friends or family go to see a movie or make another plan i know when we lost my sister she always um, you know hosted um, thanksgiving for us and so um when that didn't happen obviously anymore we um we decided at one point we would go to my niece's. Um, she kind of took some of the holiday over, but then we decided um, it was a short time you know, frame we would stop over there. We, we started going to see a, a holiday movie. So um, that is just something that we've kind of, you know, we put in our plan, we, we, we put it there. It was, it was nice, something different. Um, enjoy yourself, right? The holidays are tough, but there will also be love and joy. So accept that, accept the love and joy that people, you know, hopefully will give you some love, you know, throughout this holidays. Um, remember, it is okay to be happy. This doesn't diminish how much you love and miss the person who isn't there this holiday. And once again, don't feel guilt for the joy you do find this holiday season, season even if it's in, you know, something small. All right, so now we're moving on to finding hope and healing. Okay, Trish. Okay. Um, so you want to actively participate and, and develop a plan. Um, you just don't want to throw something together at last minute without any forethought. Um, so you get together with the people that you're closest to, that you want to, want to involve um, in this discussion, and you really determine how you're going to proceed. Um, whether it's Thanksgiving or whatever the holiday might be. And that includes who's present, where you'll be, um, how much you'll do, what you don't want to do, what you want it to look like. Um, having that um, insight to, and forethought to plan things out is really critical. And I think it'll be a little easier for you if you have a plan. And at some point you'll be able to embrace your life and explore your possibilities. You, you learn to remember that person, um, but with less pain and the pain will diminish. The memory doesn't diminish, the love doesn't diminish, but the pain, the intensity of that pain will diminish. 
and exploring your possibilities is every time you lose someone, you're a different person. That person has left this print on your life, uh, on your heart, and they're part of you and, and you forge ahead um, sharing who you are with other people, what you've learned about yourself and explore your possibilities for, um, you know, what can give you some meaning in your life as you go ahead, whether you start at the holidays or, or afterwards. Um, and it's good to honor that person. You can think about what would he or she want me to do? What would make them feel really special if, if I did this? Um, I think that's important. Um, and make a list of realistic goals, whatever you think you want to accomplish within a certain period of time and what you want to accomplish over the holidays as well. And again, you may choose to volunteer or reach out to other people. You may not have the energy to do that, but then again, you might want to consider trying it maybe once, take a small step. Um, I always think of the next door neighbor or that's just a figure of speech, but just someone that you know of that's pretty needy, but not in a way that they'll overwhelm you. Someone that by needy, I mean someone that'll really appreciate you stopping by and bringing them a card or something small. And then create a meaningful experience. Um, it's not a joyous experience getting through the holidays, but it can still have meaning. And that's what you wanna do is uh, establish meaning during that time that you'll remember um, as time goes on. And then we have the candlelight ceremony that I discovered this in a book. Did you want me to do that, Wendy, or do you wanna do this? Yeah, if, you, if you can do it, that'd be great, sure. Okay. So in this book that I love, it's called The Empty Chair. Uh, it's by Susan Zonabelt Smeenge and Robert DeVries. I'm sorry, I have a dog that's barking. I apologize, there's no one here. Shh, be quiet. You must be quiet. Lay down, please lay down. Lay down, lay down. You wanna um, create a special memory to honor your loved one you've lost. And the purpose is to bring healing and hope to your life and those um, who also care for your loved one that you've lost. Annie, be quiet, stop it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. So can't do much with an old, old man dog here. Um, so the suggestion is that you light four candles during the ceremony. This is something you can give some thought to, uh, may work for you. You, want, you may want to alter it somewhat or Maybe you don't want to do it at all. That's okay too. The first candle you light, you share how your heart has been worn by the love you felt for your loved one. So you're with other people and you're sharing the, the things that you loved about the person that, well, that you still love. And you share the love that you, you had for them. You talk about it. Um, and again, this is something that you have to plan. You have to discuss it ahead of time. <clears throat> the second candle will represent your memories of holidays or special days of past tr traditions that you created together. So you actually thank your loved one for how they made the holiday special. So you might say, mom, I really appreciate all the special gifts you made us during the holidays. I know when I think about my father, the year that he lost his job right before the holidays, there was no money and to buy any gifts for us. And we were young, there were four of us. And he and my mother made furniture and Barbie doll wedding, a whole wedding gown set for the Barbies, dressed them in the, the outfits. He actually made furniture, beds, with bedspreads. My, my older brother even made a little sweeper. He was an electrician that worked. And my sister and I still talk about this. Um, and when my mother's gone, it'll be particularly hard, but that was just the most meaningful Christmas I think I've ever experienced. I don't think one will ever surpass it. And I, 
I miss my dad and those special things that he was able to do. He was very creative and good with his hands. So you can do something like that. You can talk about those very special times. The third candle will represent how you are going to think about living your life without them. So you talk about what you might try to do to begin healing on your journey. I'm going journey. I'm going to try this. I'm going to take a trip here. I'm going to do some writing. I'm going to paint. Um, I'm going to spend more time with my grandchildren. Um, I'm going to um, forgive someone that I, I don't have a good relationship with and maybe foster you know, a new or improve a relationship that you've had with someone that's gone sour. Um, things like that, I think, are really special. So you can talk about that as well. And then the fourth candle will represent your hope for the future and how you begin to feel new life beginning to grow in your heart. And again, you, you don't have to do all of these. Maybe you just want to do the first one or you want to do the first two. You might not be able to do the last two and that's okay too. Um, but the ceremony is, is to honor that person and um, there are other ways you can do it but I just thought that was a really special way to consider. sharing that memory and, and honoring that memory and that person. Okay. <clears throat> we have the last part that was that little assignment, Wendy, if you want to go ahead and talk. Yep. About so for those of you <clears throat> that were here last, <clears throat> ended on talking, on talking about what your holiday plan was to start to begin to think that for those of you that are new that are joining us, um, you know, just to begin to think about sharing of your plan or what, you know, even um, I know, Marilyn, you have a, you know, a room full of your, uh, you know, family members there, but sharing, each of you sharing your own thoughts about what the plans are with one another and thoughts of how um, your unique holiday grief and concerns and fear, fears will be, right? So um, we just want to wish you the Cancer Caring Center holiday wishes. We all Cancer Caring Center want to wish you all much peace this holiday season. No, we will always be here for you. I just wanted to read that slide, but I'm going to stop sharing because that's the last one, last slide. But um, we want you guys to be able to, um, we want you to be able to talk about um, your plans. You know, if you've thought about what your plan will be and um, just some thoughts, you know. Um, so anybody want to go first, what your holiday plan might be? Amy? Oh, uh, we're, we're buying a new house and selling our house. So we're planning on moving into our, we're signing uh, the day after Thanksgiving. So we're occupying ourselves with buying a new house. There's something, it, it's like buying, you're splurging on a gift. You're, you're just making it supersized. <laughs> <laughs> true i mean hanukkah is eight days so why not let it linger for a very long time um one thing i did want to mention to everyone is that like if you are looking for volunteer opportunities and wanting to do them on christmas there is uh an organization uh that you would go to jfedpgh.org and they volunteer all day on christmas oh wow i've never heard of that before well i i tell you that as i and i uh planned uh, opportunities throughout the entire Pittsburgh region. Wow. What oh, is your frozen Amy? Wendy? Amy, uh -huh. what is it again? I'm sorry. What's the website again? jfedpgh.org. J-F-E-D-P-G-H.org. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's a wonderful suggestion. Yeah, that is great. I like. I it. planned it for many years. Oh, okay. Cool. Good idea. Great. 
How about uh, Kathleen? What's your plan for the holidays? Um, so Thanksgiving, I don't have plans. I was actually online during the meeting looking at volunteer places that I can serve Thanksgiving um, dinner to. Couldn't find anything. Um, but Christmas, I am going to go to my sister's in Los Angeles. Um, so I'll be with her. Oh. Good. 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 How about Ted? Sorry, Wendy, can I just tell her? Yeah. There's a church yeah. in Wilkinsburg that um, always does uh, Thanksgiving uh, meals. Brad and I have done it before. Okay, great. I was looking at Light of Life, but it didn't look like they had anything. I'll check that out. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Ted, you're muted, dear. Can you unmute? There you go. Whoop. No, you're not. I lost your picture. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving, we're going over to my nephews on my wife's side, and it'll be with the, my uh, son and his wife. So it'll be different, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for Christmas yet. Yeah. I haven't thought about it. Well, you have some time. But I did get out the trains that Rocco and I worked on last mm -hmm. Christmas. Aww. So I'm starting to work on them already. That'll, Before, that'll, you know. that'll be nice, you know, and t take some pictures, you know, and and uh, you know that's and, and share them, you know, and share them with others. You know, I think that's the thing too is you know to feel closer to Rocco, but then also to share that, you know, share right. with people, Ted, which is great. Well, when it's done, I'll let everybody see it. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. A special talent. Yeah. That's all. Go from there. That's all. Try to get through this. Yeah, it's one day at a time. All right. of this. Yeah. Today I went up to my friend that just passed away and picked up his motorcycle and took it to be sold and everything. And today was a bad oh. day for me. Oh, I'm sorry. So, mm. Yeah, I lost two very important people in one year. That's hard. Yeah. 2020 sucks. Yeah. It's been a tough year all around, but losing someone just complicates everything. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Nancy, how about you? Um, I think Nancy left. Uh, no, uh, the other Nancy. Oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um i think i'm just my sister my older sister-in-law of my husband i'm an only child so i don't uh and my family's not close they're out of um out of, two of them are out of state a lot of them are out of state one's in evansburg but um probably just go to my older sister-in-law's house my husband's the youngest of six and uh, i think i'm just going to visit for thanksgiving and i like the idea of taking my own car if i just want to stay a little bit I remember having a conversation with my sister-in-law the day of my mother's funeral, which was September 6th. And um, I just looked at her and said, just be patient with me. Um, yeah. But as far as Christmas, I don't think I can go that far ahead right now. Um, I just need to get okay. through like one holiday at a time. Um, mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, three days later is my birthday. So that's going to be oh. tough too without my mom and yeah. my dad. So. And my both of my parents died of leukemia. I didn't mention that before, but oh dear, my parents had you know just fourteen years apart. But uh, yeah, I just want to get through one holiday at a time. So, but thank you for having me. Glad you're here, Nance. Thank you. Thanks. And Rob, we'll go to you next. 
Well, Thanksgiving, we're going to spend with my daughter and my grandchildren. And I will take my own car. And I feel if I'm overwhelmed, I'll leave. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and Christmas, it'll be the same thing. We'll, uh, we'll spend it with my daughter and my granddaughters. And again, I'll, I'll take my own car. And if I feel like I'm overwhelmed, I'll, I'll leave. Mm -hmm. But Christmas Eve, I've decided that she and I always uh, celebrated it with a ball of champagne. So I think I'll have a split of champagne. Oh. Yes. yes, yes. Excellent. Sounds like a great yes. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, all that. Yeah, I've been thinking about that for a while. So yeah. Good connection. They have plans. Yeah. Marilyn, how about you and your crew? Oh, uh, Wendy, it's interesting. Uh, we have always volunteered on holidays with a group called the Living Stones. And they are a multi-denominational, non-denominational group of people who get together and serve meals to people who need to eat something or people who just need to have company. So, uh, we have done that for years. Uh, it's always been a great solace to me because I've always believed that if the family you were given by birth doesn't work, it's up to you to make one for yourself. No. And mine but, uh, became a, a family working with the Living Stones, uh, working with some of the churches who serve spaghetti dinners to those who need a family, even if it's just for a few hours, has always been very comforting to me. But as for the candle ceremony, We've always had people at our house on Christmas Eve, and there is a hurricane lamp for each family who comes in, and they're always given a candle to light, and they put it in the window so if the souls of somebody in their family are looking for them, searching the earth, and this is all myth, whatever you want to call it, that they know that there's somebody here that remembers them and that they're welcome there that day. Oh um, I love it. I, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, when there are most of the family members have passed away, including the people who came to dinner, we have always given the hurricane lamp to the families who survived them so that they can take it to their home and light that candle. So if their soul's wandering the earth looking for them, they can find their way home as a matter of speaking. But that is so lovely. Thank you. But we got rid of the hubbub of the holiday years ago. We found that we were just so frenzied and so upset that we didn't enjoy it, that we just cut back on everything. Uh, we decorate, we go to church. That is the focus of Christmas in our house. Um, we volunteer, and then we come home and have a traditional meal of beef bourguignon. Oh. With champagne. Yeah, My friend over there said too. But, you know, we found that if we stop trying to do the hype life was so much more pleasant mm -hmm. and we just didn't buy into it was up to us to make macy's bottom line or something else like that we had more than we needed yeah and i find that if you get get out of that whole frenzy life is easier you can focus a little more on what mm -hmm. they should be but i'm just gonna kind of do the traditions. I will probably go to the mausoleum where my husband is interred and lay a white rose because that was our calling card to each other. Mm. And just have a few minutes with him and go home and try and make the best of my life as it is now. Very different, but it's still life under any circumstance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the help of friends like, group like you, with the help of everybody like you and friends and all the good thoughts, with God's will, hopefully I will be able to do it. And I thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your ideas and what's worked. That's really special. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Marilyn. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for all of you guys and all of you to be able to get together here and all of you to be able to hopefully, um, you know, um, have the support of each other, you know, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, it, it's a family too, because what we share in common is we're grieving. We've all lost somebody and we're, we're struggling to find a way. So this can just be a small family too, for whatever time we have. Mm -hmm. And we should be thankful for what we've been given. Mm -hmm. right. And right. that's my feeling today. That sounds lovely. Sounds like a lovely sentiment, you know, and, 
the one thing about doing this all on Zoom is that whenever you actually do get to see each other in person, it's it's really amazing to connect you all in person, you know, that you're, yeah. you know, so I think that's something we, we look forward to, at least Trish and I do. We, we looked forward to seeing, yeah. Amy, seeing was, the faces. Amy, yeah, Amy was there and Ted was there. So last time, and then Nancy, who was on here earlier, who had to get off, she was also there too, mm -hmm. you know, in a ceremony. So it was lovely. So we, we hope that for you all as well as we move forward, for sure. Anything else to so add? So I give them our traditions and what we do with wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm you sorry. Said, no, I, I, said to, I said to you, Trisha, is there anything else that you wanted to oh, add? Oh, no, we just appreciate all of you and your courage and for sharing um, with us and with one another. And... Um, we just pray that you have a blessed time with whoever you love and find meaning um, and healing. It takes a lot of time. You have to go through a lot of big holidays, I think, to get to the other side. All right. And please know that we're here if you need me in between now and January. Please reach out, you know, and I'm, I'm certainly available for individual sessions, you know, between now and then if you need anything. And um, Trish and I look forward to those of you um, that are new joining us in January and going on that grief journey with us. So um, we are definitely here for you. Thank you. We are. You're welcome. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, I'm Ted, you, you tomorrow. <laughs> you're on my schedule. Yes. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, Have everyone. Night. Take good, good care. Night. night, night. Thank you for everything. You're welcome.